of my uh, <laughs> one of my areas of work is feedback. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, one of my areas of work is um, is creating site-specific um, compositions and artworks. And as part of that, I'm really interested in the way that architects create a sense of rhythm and dynamics through their work. A really well-known phrase um, when looking at these two disciplines together is that uh, architecture being described as frozen music by Johann van der Goethe. Um, but, I mean, that's a very nice phrase, but what, what did he really mean by that? If we look further back in time, we can look at um, Vitruvius, uh, and uh, in his 10 books of architecture, he said that music also the architect ought to understand so that he may have knowledge of the canonical and mathematical theory. So I suppose what that's saying is that there's a shared language, there's a common ground between the two disciplines, uh, and there's transferable approaches based around mathematics. Uh, if there's uh, an exemplar of, 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 of that combination of, of, of disciplines, um, I'd say it's probably Yanis Sinarkis, uh, the architect and composer. He worked for a long time under Le Corbusier, but also worked uh, independently. Uh, this is his 1958 Philips Pavilion, uh, which he did whilst working under Corbusier. Um, but for me, the interesting thing about this is that the mass that he used for creating uh, this structure, which I think is incredible on its own, is the same mass that he used for creating the graphic score for his composition, Metastasis. So you can see that the curves uh, come from the same source, and then that piece of music, like non-traditional notation, was scored for orchestra. It's something that was translated into traditional music and performed live. So I'm really interested in the fact that you can create a physical form and a musical form uh, from the same basis. It's about this shared idea of shared structure. So aside from their acoustic physical properties, what do different structures sound like? How can we apply a, an, a sonic aesthetic to them? Or conversely, how can we represent um, a piece of music as a physical form? Fortunately, there are plenty of people who have done um, really interesting work from both sides of the two disciplines. This is Karl Heinz Stockhausen, who's, uh, he said that in his compositions he um, did a number of pieces of work that referenced, again, Le Corbusier's um, modulo system. That was a system of proportional, a proportional mathematical system for uh, developing buildings and built structures uh, based around the human body, but also based around proportions of the golden ratio. So it's a mathematical structure that could be applied both to architecture, but Stockhausen applied it to his music. From the other side of the disciplines, uh, Stephen Hole, the architect, has done a number of pieces of work that are inspired by music or scores. In this instance, it's the Dayang House. Uh, and you can see the roof plan of the Dayang House is um, uh, taken, the, the format is taken from this uh, Istan Anholt um, score on the left-hand side. Another piece of work that Stephen Hall did um, uh, is the Stretto House, which was um, inspired by a Bella Bartok piece. Um, and he says about that, where music uh, has a materiality in instrumentation and sound, this architecture attempts an analogue in light and space. And he's put that into a, an equation as material times sound over time is equivalent to material times light over space. So the left-hand side represents the music, and the right-hand side represents architecture. But if you think about that in terms of applying a duration to these ideas, then on the left-hand side, we could think about time as duration in music, and space in architecture we can think of as distance. So that's a very simple way of making a translation between uh, uh, architecture and music is by applying distance as duration. And that works quite nicely in how I've always thought about sound and music. Um, and the first time I can think of uh, kind of thinking about sound in this particular way was um, when I was young and I was driving along in my family car and we're driving around this country lane and the thing that uh, struck me was not the surroundings but it was more this waveform that I, the shadows created on the road and my automatic response to it was considering the car to be a playhead that moved forwards over this waveform. Uh, and I thought of it with high frequencies on the right-hand side and low frequencies on the left-hand side. So as the car moved over, I made a sound with my mouth of the sound of what I considered the car to be making as it moved over the waveform. And if you just take a, a moment to think about how annoying that would have been for everyone else <laughs> in the car, it would have been... <laughs> uh, so um, I took that quite annoying approach 
um, and worked with um, a programmer called Joey Scully. And we developed, uh, this many years later, a synthesizer that played the landscape. The red section in the middle is a playhead, and it moves across the landscape. In this case, it's the Brecon Beacons hillside around the, the festival, uh, the, the location of the Green Man Festival. And as it moved across, the topography was taken as the data, and different frequencies were played based on the elevation. Uh, and there's actually a short video of that here. And so that's, I suppose, yeah, represents this playing, playing the landscape. And then um, I took that idea forwards uh, with, the, with the project called Flow, which was a collaboration with uh, Owl Project, who are based here in the Northwest. They make incredible uh, handmade wooden instruments and, and DIY electronics. And so this still had the playhead notion, but rather than it being a structure that, uh, where the playhead moves across the landscape, in this case, it's based on a tidal stretch of the River Tyne in Newcastle, between Newcastle and Gateshead, moored on the Newcastle side. So in this case, the playhead was static, but it was the landscape, as I saw it, moving underneath, and the transitions between the salt water and, uh, and uh, the, 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 as the saltiness of the water changed, then, then the tones created on board were transitioning as well. So again, this, play, this pl playhead uh, is, is, is a kind of recurring theme in how I've approached it. So how do you apply that to architecture? Um, well, in this in instance, it's another collaboration, this time with um, Novak, uh, who creates large-scale outdoor projected works. And this is 195 Piccadilly, which is the home of BAFTA. And as you can see, the building is broken down into 10 bays across its facade. Um, and my approach to creating music from that was, again, to make, apply playheads and move them from left to right. So if we look at the second floor, um, we have uh, the, the pink uh, notes. I consider that to be a rhythm of one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Similarly, going across onto the first floor, it's one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. Uh, so to give an example of that, this is uh, the first floor uh, with the, the rhythm played by the cello. <laughs> And so, uh, for the full composition, I took that same approach, but applied playheads moving across the structure at different speeds uh, and at different points in the building. This image doesn't show, but there was quite an intricate balustrade across the top and, and picked out different details. So these different playheads moving at different paces created loops that overlaid each other, and the full composition sounded like this. <laughs> But that's obviously just a very literal translation of building proportions. Um, and that doesn't necessarily represent what an architect is trying to achieve when they're, when they're creating their work. Um, going, going back to Stephen Hall again, he says, music, like architecture, is an immersive experience. It surrounds you. One can turn away from a painting or a work of sculpture, while music and architecture engulf the body in space. And so how do we consider an aspect of the human interaction, human response to architecture? Um, Barographic is a project that I first devised for um, Sage Gateshead and have recently been working with um, the Lowry in Salford. And it tries to bring together those two different aspects, both the, the rhythms and dynamics within physical building proportions, but also something that's an analogy for human experience, for atmosphere, that intangible thing that we, 
we try and describe when we're talking about a venue or an experience. This is um, a 3D model of, uh, of the Lowry building in Salford. And the orange parts are, again, playheads that move around the 3D structure and create rhythms based on the proportions of the building. Um, and we can listen to that here. So a syncopation within the music that it, that it builds. And then this second layer that I mentioned, trying to do something that represents atmosphere, um, was something that um, a mechanical barograph is installed uh, in the gallery for a period of time, for the duration of the installation. And these are the first eight weeks um, of charts, so it draws a line as the atmospheric pressure changes over the course of time. And this was, uh, again, another layer of the melody that was created for the final piece of work. And as I say, this is kind of the, uh, this was played by the string section. So you'll hear in this piece of music that, that the building proportion is played by the vibraphone and then the cello line uh, is playing the, uh, the atmospheric pressure changes. <laughs> Personally, I, I find it, I think it, it's absolutely fascinating the way that um, architects and musicians have taken uh, ideas and taken inspiration from the other discipline and then applied it in their own medium. And I think the, 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 the relationship between the two is something that is, is just got so many intricate relationships. Um, and I hope that maybe on your way home, as you see, maybe in a, a fascinating piece of architecture, you can think about how that structure might be represented through sound, or alternatively, when you're listening to a piece of music that really captures you, consider how the structure of that music could be applied as a physical form. Um, but there's also the important thing that um, there's, there's, that doesn't encapsulate the human experience of architecture, and neither architecture or music can really be... Um, considered in isolation, you never really get the full value because it's really only when you have a human interaction with a building that it really brings it to life and that gives it a real sort of uh, sense of uh, action and it brings architecture and music to life. So uh, thank you very much. Thank you.